and we are back online. For those of you just joining us now for this session, welcome to and uh, welcome back to the people that attended the previous uh, webinar. Uh, we have just finished uh, the previous webinar on organization as a dimension in companies uh, for transitioning to circular economy. The video of that will be uh, was recorded and will be uploaded uh, tonight onto our website by yours truly, uh, probably a bit late. Uh, so feel free to check that out if you couldn't attend the first session. During uh, this episode here, we will use a survey tool called Mentimeter. Um, so find your phone or just have it nearby or just a browser could work as well. Today's second episode uh, deals with strategy and business model innovation, and it covers um, an introduction to the topic first, and then we will present some interesting statistics based on our match platform. And we finish the presentation off with a case example. The topic will be presented by Associate Professor Daniela Figoso here from DTU. Daniela has a background in environmental and industrial engineering and has for the past three and a half years led a D2 research project on business models for circularity. Daniela will be supported by Tim McAloon uh, that you might have met already. And Tim is the lead of this project and a professor here at uh, DTU. His research covers product service systems, sustainability and circular economy. So actually, Daniela, the stage is yours. Thank you very much, Lasse. Uh, and it's really nice to be able to talk about strategy and business model for circular economy today, not least because this seems to be the area where companies have the highest interest when looking to circular economy implementation. In this project that Lasse just mentioned to you, we had six different focus areas, one of them being business model for circular economy, and that one was by far the one that we got the biggest engagement from companies. But then the question might be, why is that happening? And why there's such a big interest in changing our business model? I would say that's probably connected to the systemic change that is required uh, for a circular economy and the very high importance of both having a circularity integrated into the overall company strategy but also deploying that into different business models that will ensure that you are actually uh, providing solutions that can ensure circularity across the entire life cycle of products. And uh, let's have a look into uh, the strategy and the business model to try to understand why is that happening. And I would take a starting point today in this report from the OECD in 18, showing that despite the very high interest in business models for circular economy, we can still see that the market penetration of those circular business models today in industry account for no more than five to 10% of the revenues for most of the manufacturing companies that they had looked into. So there's a quite big dichotomy here because yes, companies really uh, want to change their business models. But if you look into what's the outcome and the final result of that, we can still see that we are in the very uh, early beginning so far. Let's try to have a look in the report. And they also uh, show different types of business models for different sectors. So for instance, we have product as a service or product service system business models, where instead of selling uh, the product, what we start to do is to establish relationships with customers that will be either based to uh, having access to the product and paying for having access, or maybe uh, based on the results that you are getting from using those products. We can see some sectors here, for instance, the automotive industry, uh, especially in relation to chemicals with a quite high market penetration. Uh, and you can also see uh, in the books uh, area with a quite high as well, up to 35%. But then we also have other types of business models. For example, the product life extension, 
So how can we design new products to last for as long as possible? And when doing that, providing services to maintain those products and to, uh, to make them to fulfill their functions for a longer time. Here we see sectors, for example, machinery, we focus on remanufacturing with a yet very low market penetration, three to 4%. And then we also see something similar in the automotive industry with only uh, 1%. The final business model they have explored here is waste as a value. So how can we use uh, recycling uh, strategies, for instance, for recovering the value of materials and putting them back uh, in, in the cycle. And what we can see here is that in the paper industry, it's reaching about 38% uh, of the market. And plastics, which is actually one of the uh, biggest focus in Europe just now, it's only 13% uh, so far. And, and the big question here and what we see from our research in business model implementation is that companies still face lots of challenges when developing uh, new business models, when piloting those new business models, but also when implementing them. And one of the biggest challenges when starting to do so is to understand what type of business model should I go for? And actually, what are the different value positions that I can deliver to my customer and how these can ensure that we are having a higher circularity at one point, but also a higher sustainability performance at the other point. And uh, there are lots of different tools uh, out there. And in the match platform, you can also find these um, patterns. It's uh, cards that can help companies on the basis of a number of different cases, more than 200 companies to identify what key areas would be important for them to implement in their business model, both from a downstream point of view, looking to value propositions, but also an upstream looking to value creation in collaboration with key partners and the entire value chain um, as well. Now let's have a look into the match assessment. What types of questions companies uh, answer when trying to understand how ready they are for strategy and business model innovation. And here we basically have five main uh, questions that I'm gonna go one by one uh, together with you. But in the meantime, while I present, I would like to invite you to join this menti.com. You can see that at the bottom uh, of this slide with the code 85 27 61 9. And then you can uh, answer the different questions so that we can actually compare the readiness of the people here in, in the room today in relation to the readiness of the companies that have answered the platform. So the first question in here is about integrating circular economy into the long term strategy uh, of the company. And we often see this as being a critical factor when ensuring that there will be top management commitment, resources, and also support to implement the new circular economy business models. The second one has to do with resource allocation. So the question here is to what extent have the company management committed themselves to circular economy initiatives? That's the first thing, but also allocated resources to do so. Yes, there is a business case when implementing circular economy, but it also requires investment in the very beginning. The third question has to do with the value propositions and to what extent uh, the companies are identifying new ways of proposing value to their customers that look at all the different life cycle stages. So not only in relation to the use phase, but also looking to extraction, manufacturing, use, end of use, and then you'd make the end of life um, as well. And uh, by experience, we can see lots of different opportunities in there. Question number four has to do with uh, communicating these new offerings to the market. So ensuring that there will be market acceptance of your new circular business models and that customers can actually understand what's the value that they can get out of it uh, from a sustainability, from a circularity 
but also from a, a user point of view. And the final question uh, in here has to do with um, identifying new revenue streams. So very often when you are innovating your business model for circular economy, there will be changes in the way that you capture value from the market, but also different types of services, solutions that will require different ways uh, uh, to, to account for that from a financial and also economic point of view. And uh, those five areas together, they actually provide a very good indication about how ready we are from a strategy, but also from a circular economy point of view. Tim, I will get back to you now so that you can show uh, the data. And then we will have a look at the results from the Mentimeter. Thanks, Daniela. Yeah, so I'm quite interested to see the results from the Mentimeter, but here you have uh, the results that we have uh, collected so far from the uh, respondents that we've had on the platform. And uh, for those of you who have joined before, it's a similar dashboard, but for those of you who are new, uh, welcome to you. And what we're showing here is the overall readiness level for this dimension, the one out of eight dimensions uh, on the Match uh, platform. And this is actually, it's the second highest area. So within all of the eight dimensions of circular uh, transformation or transition, uh, the strategy and business model is uh, number two, very closely following manufacturing actually, uh, and getting ready for manufacturing supply chain. So here we have the questions that Daniela just went through in her part of the presentation. And you can see already here that long-term strategy is the clearly the most uh, uh, ready part, which is uh, very nice to see. And it's also with a, a spread skewing towards those companies which are um, uh, more ready than in other areas. If you look at the list up here of sectors, similar to the last webinar where we looked at uh, organization, uh, the building materials and food and beverage are at the top and electronics and metal and metal products are at the, uh, the lowest readiness levels. And that's because strategy and business model and organization, of course, they fit very well or very closely together. But don't just take this data at the top level uh, for granted, because when we click in a second on some of the aspects, you'll see actually how the data actually skew. One uh, thing to notice here um, in terms of the, the, uh, the, the type of the business, whether it's a uh, B2B, B2C or B2G uh, business, you can see that the readiness of the B2G companies is um, actually much lower. And that's the reason for that is uh, that we can see here, uh, now you can see the dashboards changed. We can see this probably because of um, public procurement um, policies are not up to the level um, of uh, business to business or business to consumer uh, areas. So that's quite interesting in itself. There's some policy instruments there that should maybe uh, help us to understand how to encourage uh, public procurement of circular uh, solutions and business models better. If we look at B2B and B2C, uh, the business to business, business to consumer areas, they're very, very similar. Again, if we look down here, we can see uh, similar to what we've seen in, in other areas, uh, micro companies, less than 10 employees are the most ready of all. Uh, that's in some ways obvious because they're much more flexible uh, in terms of their uh, the willingness and their ability to change. Remember, this is about organizational and, and business-wise uh, transformation to circular economy. So these are actually um, uh, showing the, the, the biggest strength here. Now, if we look at the data from a question-by-question -question perspective, very briefly, if we look at the long-term strategy, this is the area where we have the, the, the highest readiness. And if we look at scaling up initiatives, just watch the sectors when we, uh, we, we dig into this one, because all of a sudden the building materials and, uh, uh, sector and food and beverage, they move themselves lower down. Other manufacturing companies, there are all sorts of other companies which are not gathered in the, uh, uh, these different uh, areas here. Um, so it's all sorts of different kinds of, of companies. And we actually have the data to go into the details to see which those are. But then we're looking at chemistry, plastics, and refined minerals and oils. That's everything from uh, chemical uh, producers to the plastics uh, the manufacturers and so forth um, are actually uh, quite high up there. And furniture and wood and paper products are up. In fact, 
from a long-term strategy perspective, they're seeing that they are uh, that they're the most ready, in fact. Also in terms of the uh, resources which are being put into this. So that's quite impressive to see this area here. If we look um, at another area, which is um, maybe the, uh, the lowest on the scale, this is in terms of new revenue streams. So this is quite interesting. We can see lots of long-term thinking and, and obviously lots of pilot products going on because from a revenue stream perspective, we're seeing that uh, many haven't even started to, to look at the, the business case or to see how we uh, can expect to, um, to alter the, uh, the way in which our revenue, revenue stream is going to, to, uh, to, uh, to alter here. And you can see here that uh, by sector, the textile uh, and, and, and uh, footwear and clothing sector, and then small products like toys and safety and sports equipment and so forth are actually the ones which are the most ready in the aspect of actually making this change. And we can see that in the cases that we've been looking at also in terms of the, uh, the readiness to change here. Maybe one final uh, uh, insight here before I give this back to, to Daniela uh, to, to look at your re uh, responses on the Menti and to give over to some Q&A before we finish. If we look at in terms of new value propositions, so this is actually what are the, uh, the pilots we've been running? What are the different business proposals we're, we're looking at here? If we look at this one here in terms of uh, new value propositions, here we see that uh, the, the building materials uh, uh, sector is, is not there at all. Uh, so it's, it's in terms of other manufacturing companies, electronics, metal and metal products are looking at, uh, uh, are, are very far ahead in the, the uh, amount of companies we have here. And if we're looking at those, those which are planning and scaling up, uh, here we see that uh, the building uh, sector is all the way in the top again. And in fact, this is the only area that they are um, uh, represented in this view in, in this particular question. We could go on for, for hours looking into these data, but we're going to be continuing to, to slice and to dice these data and present them um, both on our website, but also in some papers that you can, can read. And part of the match product, of course, is to communicate this to policymakers, to industry organizations. And we have uh, the Confederation of Danish Industry as, as one of our um, steering group members, and also the Danish Environmental Protection Agency, another steering group member, which we're basically working closely together with to look at how we get the most interesting and insightful and useful data to present to them. So back to you, Daniela, and I'm interested to see what uh, our uh, participants have answered uh, in, on the Menti, but also to, to start some Q&A. Yes, so let's have a look into that. And uh, thanks for all of you who added your uh, insights into the Menti. And it's actually quite nice to see that it's very similar to what Tim just presented. So let's just have a look uh, question by question to see how it looks like for you joining us here uh, today. If we start by looking to uh, circular economy integration into your long-term strategy, we can see that the large majority of you are either just now trying to understand the potential or planning the pilot implementation, but we can already see some of the participants planning scale up and also uh, scaling up or having already a full implementation. That's really similar to the pattern that Tim just showed to us. If we move forward, and here we look into management commitment, it's a similar uh, picture again. Uh, probably the same people that answer that they have a very high strategy uh, commitment to circular economy have also answered that they have top management commitment uh, for that. And then we can see that many other companies are coming um, along the way. If we move to question number three, that was in relation to identifying new value propositions across the product life cycle. We can still not see from the participants today, uh, anybody already scaling up or with full implementation, but the pipeline is definitely there uh, already. We'd love to hear more from you uh, in, in the comments, maybe in the chat afterwards, what you are doing. But here we see quite of a big difference, right? So when it comes to actually moving from the internal company planning to communicating the value of the new offerings and new value proposition to the market, then it seems that we are quite behind. 
And most of the companies uh, and the participants here today, they are still trying to understand the potential. And finally, uh, the last question has to do with um, revenue streams and financial uh, models. And we can see a similar pattern from uh, the one before with some of you also mentioned that this is not relevant uh, for your company. So interesting to see some correlations in relation to your inputs today uh, in Dementi and all the data that Tim uh, presented uh, just before. So that was what we had for uh, today in relation to the business model and strategy for circular economy. And now it's back to you. Let's say we might have some questions from the audience. Yeah, yeah, we do. Um, the first question uh, is for you, Daniela. You presented some different uh, tools to uh, identify uh, new innovative business models. How do a business uh, decide which one to go for? Yeah, that's really a good question. And I said that there is indeed lots of research so far looking to how do I identify the opportunities uh, for new business models by looking to customer, the legal context, looking to competitors and doing benchmarks and looking to both sustainability potential and circularity potential. These are all very important input data that can then be supported by tools that have an aggregation of different uh, business model patterns as we'd call it, that really help in defining which ones are in scope for your organization and also which ones are outside of scope. I would really recommend you to have a look into the work we've developed in the circuit project. I will add the link in the chat in a little bit for you where you can have access to all of those tools that are of course also available in the match platform. Thank you. For you, Tim, I have a actually a really interesting question. You presented uh, the data before and uh, someone with really sharp eyes noticed that um, electronics industry and sector is, is the one with the lowest score. But interestingly, they are uh, under a lot of different regulation. I'm sure uh, the, the question is, uh, related to the waste electronic uh, directive here in EU and also the, um, what is, is it called, is it afterlife? Exactly, yeah. yeah. Thanks for that question. Uh, uh, I think it's, it's, it's very well seen and uh, it's uh, fascinating that that's the question. Um, you'll see in, in an overall perspective, they are, they are very low. Uh, depending on, on which area you look at, they're, they're basically, uh, in, in a different uh, situation. But basically what the reason is, I think, is because of the, the directives about uh, the Eco Design Directive in particular, I think the electronics industry is very, very driven by um, the legislation. So we're seeing that the, the bar is being raised in terms of what is allowable and permissible to do. And on the other hand, the, 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 the top uh, part of it is um, a, a lot of the initiatives here and a lot of the business model um, cases we've seen here and the companies we've been working with um, are they haven't had the same uh, baseline uh, raise over the years from directives and they're seeing the the possibility and the freedom to to take the initiatives and look at new value propositions and, and look at their strategy in, in the future so I, I guess that's one of the reasons why they're they're not quite as high um, and I think there's something about the um, the the uh, the overall conditions for for the different uh, sectors that we can see here uh, as i mentioned at the start with the uh, the building materials and food and beverage being very much in focus so this is one of the reasons why the uh, the business model perspective has been uh, quite uh, uh, deeply in, in in focus here for the business model perspective i guess th those are the reasons but good question we're going to be looking deeper into the data yeah uh, this next question here could uh, be answered by both of you, I, I'm sure, but uh, I'm going to send it to you, Daniela, because you uh, gave us this Minty uh, questionnaire, and the questions were on a scale from one to five, and that's the same as the companies would would uh, uh, rate in, in the match platform. But in the data shown, readiness in a sector was shown to be 11.46. Um, how is that uh, happening? 
Yeah, let me go through that together with you. And for that, I will also share the dashboard again so that we can have a look at that together. So here, what you can basically see is that for every specific question, it's going from zero points to five points that are following the redness scale, right? From uh, one uh, not really started yet or understanding the potential uh, all the way through scaling up uh, the different initiatives. And then uh, in order to be able to calculate the overall score in, in the big one, what we have is going from zero to 25. So five times 25. And the 11 basically shows the sum of all of the five uh, scores for these specific dimensions. So they are all using the same unit and they are all based on the redness score. Thanks for just a quick recap of the uh, math. Um, Tim, I would like to uh, ask the last, uh, send the last question to you. That is uh, from Henrik, and he asks, apart from the webinars here and and the match platform, how can he uh, take a deeper dive into our tools and and to assist Danish companies and and probably uh, global companies in transforming into circular economy business models? Yeah, thanks for the question, Henrik. Uh, so you're more than welcome to go in and try the, the platform. As I, I mentioned before, uh, anyone can go in and it's uh, completely free to try it out. If you're a, a manufacturing company, which is basically what the Match project was initially or is actually designed for, uh, then you'll find that you can go in and uh, look into the depth uh, of the data and, and the tools uh, rather. And, and all the different cases. If you're a, uh, an academic, a consultant, or uh, from a, another branch that, that um, is not within scope uh, on the dashboard that we showed, then uh, we, can, uh, we can talk, you can send us a, a, a mail, we can get in, in contact about how to do that. We have plans of expanding the match project into different sectors, but also into different um, uh, stakeholders so that we, we'd like to develop this so that uh, consultants can use it. We'd like to develop it so that service providers can use it. And then we'd like to go into different sectors, not just manufacturing, but also agri-food, maritime uh, materials and so forth. So this is our plans for the future. But until now you can uh, uh, go in and look at the, uh, the platform and look at the tools. If there's any particular that you'd like to, to ask us about and you'd like to, to talk with us about, ideas of, of uh, implementing this, just get in touch with us, uh, both Daniela and me, and we'd, we'd love to chat with you. Thank you. Let's uh, let that be the last uh, question for uh, today. We have lots of other questions and, and thank you all for, for sending all of this uh, into the platform. Um, we will uh, stay online and reply those uh, just by writing uh, just uh, after the session here, so you can, you can stay in the Zoom meeting. Um, maybe we should talk a bit about tomorrow because we have uh, two episodes happening tomorrow again at the same time as today. So at uh, 3 p.m. Central European time. And uh, Tim, you have a long history of uh, research in product and service innovation and you're doing the presentation of that tomorrow. What can we expect from that? And why is it important to look at for a company? And you're muted. That was a rookie mistake. Sorry about that. Mm -hmm. It's extremely exciting to look at the products and service innovation uh, dimension. Basically, if your product isn't designed for circularity, you're going to have lots of problems uh, at, at the end of life, the middle of life, at the beginning of life of the product. Uh, that's the, the, the barriers and, 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 uh, um, and, and problems and roadblocks part of it. But there's also many, many opportunities. If we design our products uh, correctly from the start, we should be able to unlock a lot of circularity opportunities. And then if we design services together with our products, what we call product service systems, then we uh, basically have a, a, a really many opportunities. We see product service systems as being a you could say a means to circular economy and circular economy as a means to sustainability. So tune in for that one tomorrow. And we've got lots of really interesting insights there. Thank you. And same question to you, Daniela, you're presenting the manufacturing and value chain uh, tomorrow. Yes, so what to expect? We are going to look into how we can make our manufacturing facilities and production processes more circular. 
And we also look into how do we go from looking only internally in our organization to expanding that to the entire value chain. We know that no one company can do the transition alone to a circular economy. It's really important to understand how to identify win-win collaborations uh, among different stakeholders in the organization, how to establish new relationships, and how to work together to actually reach a higher circularity. And that's, of course, applicable in B2B, B2C, but also B2G environments. And tomorrow we're going to see what's the difference and who is ahead in, in the game. Great. Thank you. And I can see that uh, a lot of participants are, are staying here for the very bitter end. That's really nice to see. And I hope that they will join tomorrow uh, as well. So thank you all. We will stay on the line and just reply on these uh, remaining uh, questions in the Q&A. And hopefully see you tomorrow.